It's one of the main priorities decided by EU leaders when they fix the directions for the next five years, build a European energy union. It's crucial for the economy, for Europe's security and to fight climate change. An effective energy union can fundamentally improve the situation in Europe by ensuring cheap, sustainable and secure energy for all states, companies and citizens. Geopolitical events play a key role in energy security. In addition to the ongoing tensions between Russia and Ukraine, persistently low oil prices and new perspectives opened up by the Iranian nuclear deal are also impacting global energy markets. More than half of our energy consumption is imported. This costs us one billion a day. This means that we have to take measures, especially in the current geopolitical context, to first of all solve some of the problems in our infrastructure, but also to reduce our external dependence, especially for those countries who are dependent on a single supplier. Pooling energy resources across the EU is another way to ensure energy security. But in order to achieve this, renovation and better interconnections of electricity grids and gas pipelines are needed, so that energy surpluses in one member state can be easily channeled to another member state with a shortage. Hier ist Europa schon erheblich vorangekommen, wenn ich daran denke, dass wir die Verbindungen zwischen den Mitgliedstaaten verbessert haben, aber auch mit Reverse Flow jetzt die Ukraine unterstützen konnten. So zeigt sich, dass es richtig war, darauf zu setzen, dass alle Staaten auch erreichbar sind für Gaspipelines. The leaders of France, Spain and Portugal agreed in Madrid to double the electricity interconnection capacity between their three countries and to start a major gas project. Nuestro proyecto común, la integración europea, unir, integrar y conectar. Meanwhile, in the EU's northern corner, Lithuania opened its own liquefied natural gas floating terminal, labeled Independence. With this terminal, the Baltic state not only reduces its previously 100% dependency on Russia, but it can also supply its neighbors, for example Poland. Achieving 10% interconnection is the goal proposed by the European Commission in its energy union plan. It will require serious investment. It is estimated that in the next two decades we will need 200 billion a year to upgrade our current system, uh, not only to meet future demand, but simply also to replace the existing infrastructure. What we need to do is to give a vision to that, a direction to that, so that the member states, the market players, make the right investments. Investments which in turn will not only generate economic growth and more jobs in the energy sector, but also make energy cheaper. This is crucial for Europe's competitiveness at times where energy bills are 30% less in the US than in Europe. Clean energy is a very important dimension of Europe's energy union plan. The UN Climate Change Conference, the COP21 in Paris, provides a clear momentum for a big push for more energy efficiency and a new generation of renewables. The EU is at the forefront of the decarbonisation effort and it wants other countries to follow. I remercie Europe to be the première sa contribution pour uh, la conférence de Paris sur le climat. With a target of 40% cut in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, the EU leads the world's fight against climate change. The energy union is the main driving force to reach that target.